and breaking right now on Andrea Mitchell Reports. We are watching Seminole County Court, where George Zimmerman is expected to make his first court appearance at any moment. Zimmerman was charged with second-degree murder last night in the death of Trayvon Martin. And joining me now, our panel, NBC's Ron Allen, live in Sanford, Florida, Joanne Reed, managing editor of thegrio.com, and an MSNBC contributor, and Pete Williams, NBC's justice correspondent here in Washington. Pete, first to you, let's talk about the documents, Florida law, and what to expect at this first appearance. Well, that's what it's called. It's called, in fact, under Florida law, a first appearance. So he'll come in, he'll be formally advised of the charges. The judge will make sure he has a lawyer. He's not required to say anything. He doesn't enter a plea, but his lawyer can ask ask for bail and in fact we expect his lawyer to do so and then the judge will consider whether to grant him bail based on a number of factors uh, his ties to the community whether he's likely to flee whether his release into the community would be dangerous and all those factors will be taken into account he's not automatically entitled to it it's the judge's discretion Joanne uh, if he is released on bail and that's of course up to the judge as Pete points out uh, what will be the reaction do you think from the community from Trayvon Martin's parents uh, they've said all they wanted was an arrest. What if he is out on bail? Absolutely. I think that uh, a release at this point probably would produce a fair amount of anxiety. I mean, the African American community in particular. Um, people that I spoke with last night at a church service that was about an hour after the um, after the announcement that he would actually be charged were very relieved to know that he was in, that he was going to be arrested. And I think for them that means that he remains in custody, that a trial proceeds. I don't think anyone has factored in the possibility of him being released back into the community. Ron Allen, uh, you've been covering this from the beginning, as of course has Joy Ann, and there's been a great sense of, of relief uh, by the family and their supporters. As they face this court hearing, though, this is, uh, as our friends, you know, Pete Williams and Savannah Guthrie have pointed out, this is, this is a tough case for the prosecution. A lot of people are saying that, Andrea, a lot of people are wondering if the charge should have been manslaughter, not second-degree murder, which would have had a different standard of proof. But based on what the Martin family has been maintaining uh, throughout this, their narrative of events is, is perhaps why the prosecutor went for this second-degree murder, uh, saying there was some intent. They argue that, that George Zimmerman got out of his car that night with a gun and stalked the, the Martin family's words, Trace, Tr uh, Trayvon Martin, stalked him in the apartment complex, and that's why they think that they can prove intent. Um, but yes, uh, a lot of people are saying it could be a difficult case to prove. And of course, we have this stand your ground issue, whether in fact Zimmerman acted in self-defense, which we expect to be part of his defense. Remember, the Sanford police didn't charge him because of that. One state prosecutor wouldn't charge him because of that. And a lot of legal analysts I've talked to over the past few days were frankly predicting that the state attorney would not charge Zimmerman because of that provision in the law. Basically, it's a very low threshold as legal procedures go. To, to prove that you were acting in self-defense. But I think here there's such a demand for a public accounting, a public trial, a public airing of the evidence. That may have been a factor, although it may not be a stated factor in why this is going forward in, in the court system. Of course, Angela Corey, the prosecutor, Pete, uh, was asked that yesterday and said that she was responding to the evidence that she had done this investigation in three weeks as quickly as possible and that they were not responding to public pressure. Right, and of course there will be time for the defense to make that claim, and here's how it works in Florida. They actually file a motion to dismiss the charges based on the Stand Your Ground law. They, in essence, claim immunity, and they can do that any time between now and before the trial. They can file that motion at any point. It's not really something they would probably do today. They're going to take some time to look at the evidence. His lawyer, after all, just had his first meeting with his client last night, so it's going to take a while to build that case, but that is the next real step here which is for the defense to actually ask for the charges to be dismissed based on that statute. And as we see in the courthouse, in the courtroom, uh, in that jailhouse, the sheriff's deputies are there. We're waiting on this hearing. But earlier today, Trayvon's parents were on the Today Show. This was his father, of course, Tracy Martin. At the Sanford Police Department did a thorough and impartial investigation from the beginning. George Zimmerman would have been locked up from day one, and it wouldn't have been such a, a, a huge public outcry uh, for the arrest. And, of course, uh, Trayvon's mother, of course, also Sabrina Fulton, was also on today and talking about what this has meant to her. 
I believe that uh, it just got out of control and he couldn't turn the clock back. Um, I would ask him, did he know that that was a minor, that that was a teenager, and that he did not have a weapon? Um, I would ask him that I understand that his, his family is hurting, but think about our family um, that lost our teenage son. I mean, it's just very difficult to live with day in and day out. Um, I'm sure his parents can pick up the phone and call him, but we can't pick up the phone and call Trayvon anymore. Joanne Reed, of course, she said it uh, more eloquently than anyone could. What would she say to George Zimmerman? And the answer is, um, she can't talk to her son any longer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Andrea, I think among the many X factors that took this from being just another, you know, case of a young person killed or, 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 or somebody killed to really being an international issue was that compelling picture of a mom and a dad really talking about, as they've called him, their baby. And I think Sabrina Fulton, as she's begun to speak more, has become a very compelling figure. Actually, even to Angela Corey, who at the end of her remarks announcing the charges yesterday said that at first she met with this family and she prayed with them. And she said to this family, whether or not I bring charges, what can we do to make your son's death have meaning? I think that Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin had an impact on Angela Corey personally, and I think they've been one of the reasons this has been so compelling. This is a very religious family. They've couched everything they've said in their faith, and they've really said even now that they felt that the public pressure, but also God was a factor in their son finally getting a measure of justice in this case. And Joanne, as you and Ron are standing there outside the courtroom, we're also watching on this live feed. And here we hear the procedure is about to begin. You can see George Zimmerman coming into the courtroom. And Andrea, I might say this is just a bit of a surprise, since uh, he could have been, uh, he could have appeared by closed circuit TV from uh, a jail cell. He's standing with his attorney, Mark Mira, and we've seen Angela Corey, the special prosecutor, waiting for. The judge to impanel. Let's listen in. Here, do you not? Or there he is. I see him now. Sorry, I didn't recognize him next to you there. All right, uh, Mr. Zimmerman, you're appearing here for your first appearances, our first appearance at this time for charge of murder in the second degree, and you are represented by Mr. Romero. Is that true? Remember your right to remain silent. All the other rights that he has told you about, you have to say nothing, and uh, we'll go forward here on some procedural matters only at this time. Uh, after reviewing the short affidavit for probable cause, I do find that probable cause for the charge as, as uh, put in the information. Now seeing that there's an information that was filed as of last uh, yesterday at, at 4 p.m., uh, all other matters at this point will be handled by the circuit court under the felony case number. That includes the uh, further, any further motions, uh, bond hearings, anything like that, now we'll go forward. All I can do at tell you at this time is that you will be set for formal arraignment uh, with Judge Rex Seidler on, or uh, not before, but on May the 29th, 1.30, courtroom 1A. And Mr. Romero, of course, will be in for that. Uh, there's no need to appoint other counsel. I show that he has good and adequate counsel. He's uh, well represented at this stage, and that uh, that that date will hold. That is the right date, right, Madam Clerk? Let's get that straight. Yes. Yep. Five, May 29th, 1:30 is his next official court date at this time. Uh, all other matters, uh, therefore, will be taken up with the circuit court um, at the courthouse. Mr. Romero, agree? I agree, Your Honor. Very good. State, anything else? No, sir. Thank you very much. Upon that finding, this hearing is at first appearances is concluded. Thank you. All right. Y'all take your time, and uh, I know you got to make arrangements uh, for everybody, and uh, then we'll get the rest of the group in there, and I will take a short break, okay? And as you see, the hearing is concluded. The formal arraignment has been set for May 29th at 1.30. Uh, still with us, of course, Ron Allen and Joanne Reed in Florida. Pete Williams, let's talk about what we just heard because there doesn't seem to have been an application for bail, or no. are they now going back to it? Well, and, and I think we're just waiting to see whether, in fact, uh, the defense lawyer does try to make that request now. It did seem to me like the judge was saying, that I'm done now. Anything else you want to bring up, you go to the circuit court. At the arraignment, of course, is what they've scheduled for over a month from now. That would be where uh, Zimmerman would enter a plea. As you can see today, he wasn't required to say anything, and the judge more or less told him not to. 
stand by just one moment because it seems as though if we can still hear it that Mark O'Mara is approaching the court again. Um, there is a certain amount of information in the court file necessary because of the filing of the information uh, and also because of some of the probable cause information. Um, and that includes personal information about some witnesses, some witness statements, some addresses, telephone numbers. There even, I believe, though I haven't reviewed the court file, maybe some information specific to um, Trayvon Martin, a juvenile. Um, and the concern is with the focus this case has gotten to date that there are going to be and already have been requests to get that information. So I am seeking on my client's behalf and just in the interest of justice on a temporary basis that we do a complete sealing of that record that no one have access to it except for the court, uh, the appropriate court and um, court personnel and of course the attorneys involved. I'm very concerned that well, it let's, gets... Let's take one step at a time. Sorry. The, the probable cause affidavit, the two page plus the jurat that came over today on the facts, I would be of the mindset to make that public because there's nothing in there other than what court's already read and seen. Yes, so, but anything else so far, what you've mentioned has not been filed yet to the clerk's knowledge. So that, that's if correct. You wanna, if you want to do it so from now on and the state agrees, is that? We're in agreement with that from now on, that's fine, Your Honor. Because my, my, my understanding. Stipulation. I don't have to order it. The two of you have agreed, and we'll put that in the minutes today. Uh, so from here on out, now it has to be with a hearing with Judge Rexheiler, okay? And, and real quickly, I appreciate it. I know you're very busy. Um, my concern is that there is actually information flowing to the court file right now so that it may get there within moments. And two, I would truly ask, rather than just sitting on the stipulation, that you enter an order on our stipulation. It will carry the weight of a court order because it may be attacked or sale. Remember, Mr. O'Mara, local practice, our minutes has done an ordered language on it, I believe. Is it not, Madam Clerk? Yes. So it would have the weight of an order. That's what I want to. Thanks for the time. Now, anything that I've done here, remember, is always reviewable and can be changed by the trial judge who is now assigned as of this moment in this case, okay? Thanks, Thanks again for the time. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, State. Thank you so much. Good to meet everyone. Yes, sir. All right, we'll take and as they now leave the court, George Zimmerman has already left. Of course, they were just discussing Pete Williams, whether or not witness lists and other information can be sealed from the public. The probable cause document is already a matter of record and has already been filed today. Right, that's what it amounts to the charging document, right. the very formalistic listing of the charge. And what the lawyer there is saying is that from now on, he wants things sealed. But as the judge indicated here, uh, this is all going to go to the trial judge, including, I think, it's quite clear now the request for bail and anything else now they'll have to go to a different judge that's the way these things typically work you bring to the sort of lowest level judge in the system a magistrate this first appearance which is a very formal thing you know want to make sure you've got the right guy give him the charges and then off to the races and make sure that he has counsel and is satisfied with his counsel this would have been right. the moment if he were not satisfied but, and given what happened in the last 48 hours with his previous lawyers <laughs> right uh, that was certainly a matter that you'd want to put on record or if he didn't have a lawyer that one would be provided for him a public defender Ron Allen and Joanne Reed Ron first to you uh, the next step will be of course up to the trial judge so this moves on but we're still expecting that there will be an application for bail uh, for bond and that that will be proceeding over the next days and weeks. Uh, in, indeed, Andrea. And just one more item on that, the, those records and uh, the request to seal. There's an expectation that now that this process has happened, a lot of public records, like the initial police report uh, that the Sanford police uh, did, the police report from Zimmerman's arrest yesterday, uh, the, the charging document and perhaps a narrative that explains what the prosecutor saw in this case that led her to charge as she did. There was an expectation that some of those documents might be flowing out of the courthouse uh, this afternoon, and that's why the attorney another reason that he was trying to, to stop that. Uh, as you know, this uh, case has been hotly debated in the public, and, and that's one thing that he wants to try and tamp down. He's trying to, to try and uh, lower the emotion surrounding this case, uh, and he said that he hoped that now that Zimmerman is in custody that some of that would happen. The other thing about this session is that was the first time we really got a real good, clear look at George Zimmerman, this man who's, who has captivated the nation for so long. And, of course, everyone will be looking to see if they can determine what his injuries might be. Remember, he claimed he had a broken nose. He claimed that he had gashes on the back of his head, which were part of, the, of his self-defense claim. And, of course, a layman can't determine those things. But, again, something everybody will be looking at closely.
Andrew? Of course, in the incident that happened 45, some 45 days ago, uh, thanks to you, Ron Allen and Joanne Reed, I know you're going to stay there. We may be hearing from Mark O'Mara, the uh, defense lawyer. Pete Williams, we'll take a break.